Jermaine Lole has officially left the building as the defensive tackle has transferred to the University of Louisville. What does this mean for Arizona State moving forward? We're going to talk about that on today's edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen every day. Remember, we're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, if you would like to check us out on a visual platform. But wherever you do get your podcast, make sure that you hit subscribe and the notifications button so that you know whenever we drop a new podcast as we are available Monday through Friday, giving you the best Sun Devils content in the whole wide world for basketball, football, and a little bit of everything in between. Before we get started, a quick apologies for last week as I ended up coming under the weather and unfortunately missed Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But I am back and I'm here to inform you of everything Arizona State Sun Devils. So let's go ahead and get right into the bad news, which is Jermaine Lole, defensive lineman and potential future NFL uh, prospect has officially transferred out of Tempe, out of Arizona State University, and is going to the University of Louisville to play for the Cardinals for the last year of his college career. Very, very unfortunate news. Now, this was something that I felt might have been coming because it just, with with everyone that had been coming and going from the program, and then Lole to throw his name into the hat as well, it felt like it was just, a matter of time before Arizona State lost their best returning player. And remember, I did have him as the best returning Sun Devil with Eric Gentry right behind him, and both of them are now gone from the program. And it feels like that might be the nail in the coffin for Arizona State in terms of, you know, like competing for the Pac-12 or competing in general for some kind of significant bowl game or college football impact. This now feels best case scenario, like a six and six or a seven win football team. I did predict them to go seven and five last week. And it feels like that would almost be overachieving at this point because there's, there's just so much negative surrounding the team because of all the departures and all the losses and losing Lole is going to be very, very brutal to the defense and the team entirely. I mean, this is a guy who, was talked very highly of last year heading into 2021 before he got injured. And it felt like if we had had him, that maybe the defense wouldn't have taken this step backwards that it did. It was still a good defense, but if you had Lole on the field with everyone else that was contributing throughout the year, it feels like it's hard to believe that the defense wouldn't have been up to par with our expectations. This was a guy who was looked upon as a future NFL player. And a lot of people had him with like some top 100, maybe even some top 50 pick buzz. Lole was a monster. Lole was going into the year with Pac-12 defensive player of the year expectations. First team Pac-12 expectations. He was perhaps the best player the Sun Devils had heading into last year, and losing him sucked. You were hoping that he was coming back this year. When he announced that he was returning instead of declaring for the NFL draft, this was huge news. This was a really good get for the Sun Devils, for him to come back, especially in a transition year where there wasn't a lot of certainty. This was a really big deal. But when he had announced that he was entering the transfer portal, you know, you were hoping and praying that maybe he would pull his name out of out of the portal and it seemed like there was a possibility because he had said that he was weighing his options. He didn't definitively say like, Hey, I'm not coming back. I just want to see what's out there. And then that's what it seemed like it it was is he had scheduled all these different visits and he was going to go to the different universities and see who was going to give him the best opportunity to continue building on his future to get to the pros. That was the situation that he had put himself in. And it seemed like Arizona State still had this 
outside shot for him to come back. Well, ultimately, that shot wasn't meant to be, and he did not return. And now we're in this situation where we have to figure out what to do. We have to pick up the pieces without Lole being gone. So immediate reaction, this sucks big time. This is a huge, huge loss for Arizona State. And it's going to take a lot to overcome losing this kind of a player. This this guy, like I cannot emphasize enough, was going to be a very, very, very integral po- uh, like option and player for the entirety of the team. Not just the defensive line, not just the defense, but the whole team needed Lole's return. He was a highly talented player. He was the best player returning. He was a leader. He was a three-year player for the Sun Devils. He would have been, he he might have been the best player on the team last year. He definitely was this year. And now you don't have him. That's huge. And I'm not sure how you recover from losing as much as you have. And now to add Lole on top of that, you've now lost two of your best players with Lole and Gentry being gone. You've lost countless other guys because of the transfer portal because of everything that's going on, whether it's NIL related or whether it's something to do with the program or their future in the pros, whatever it might be, you are going to be dealing with a lot of change and you could not afford to lose a player of low lace caliber, but that's the situation that you have found yourself in, unfortunately. So picking up the pieces from here is going to be very difficult and I'm not sure how you do it. Uh, you, you got to hope that your depth can find a way to stand out and you got to hope that you got to hope that somehow you're able to scheme a way to, you know, get by, by the skin of your teeth and find a way to survive such a massive blow to this team. This is not going to be an easy fix by any stretch of the imagination. Arizona state has a lot of figuring out to do and, you know, Unfortunately, you have to add Jermaine Lole to that laundry list of players that are gone. You have to add Jermaine Lole to the same laundry list that it that includes, you know, how how you're supposed to recover this year when you've lost this, that, and the other. Your coordinators are gone. You've lost a lot of guys to the NFL, and because of uh, running out of player eligibility in college, you've lost a lot of guys to the transfer portal. You're facing all of the NCAA's wrath that's potentially incoming. The Pac-12 South is a very good division. And the Pac-12, like, is it a weak conference? Yes, of course it's weak. But the teams ahead of Arizona State are definitively ahead of Arizona State. In in a best-case scenario, you are the fifth-best team in the conference behind UCLA, Oregon, uh, Utah, and UCLA, Oregon, Utah, and USC. That that's the best case scenario is you're the fifth best team now. So Lole's loss, a very big, very, very unfortunate blow to the team. It's it's not gonna be easy to overcome this loss. I quite frankly, I don't know if this is a loss that the team can overcome. We'll have to find out. There, there's a lot of time between now and the start of the season, but it, it feels like this this news could not have come at a worse time. Let's go ahead and hop into our first break. When we return, we're going to discuss more about what his loss truly means for the team and what Louisville is gaining with the addition of Jermaine Lole. This is the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. I love brownies, but did you know what I love more? Brownie batter. Sometimes I eat half the batter just while I'm making the brownies. Now, imagine if you could lick the brownie spatula clean and get some protein in it. You're in luck because Built has a new creation, and it's better than any that have come before it. The brownie batter puff. You heard me right. The This puff tastes like protein bars, and it takes it to a whole new level. They're available right now on Built.com. If you haven't tried those Built puffs yet, then I don't even know what you're waiting for. Puffs are chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bars. That's right. Delicious-flavored marshmallows covered in 100% real chocolate. With 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 7 grams of sugar, brownie batter puffs are the perfect pick-me-up for any day. All built puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. 
That means that with built, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. The brownie batter puffs will have you completely forgetting that you're eating a protein bar. No need to pinch yourself. This is real life. So go to built.com to get the brownie batter puffs. Now go to built.com and use the promo code lock 15 to get 15% off your order. Again, that's promo code lock 15 for 15% off at built.com. And again, thank you guys so much for making the locked on Sun Devils your first listen for your next listen. Check out the locked on sports today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Now, going back into the conversation of losing Jermaine Lole, let's start with what is Arizona State losing? Like I already said, you're losing your best player. Lole is a NFL ca- caliber player. Now, first round, I don't know. It, draftable, probably. Starter, who knows? There, there's a lot of time between now and then to figure out what kind of NFL player outlook he's going to have. But the bottom line is he is an NFL caliber player, regardless of how you slice it. So losing him is a big blow. There's no arguing. There's no debating that. Even if he wasn't an NFL player, this this is a very tough blow for Arizona State. He was one of the best defensive linemen you've had of the last 10 years. I truly would put him up there with like a Will Sutton. No, I, he's a step behind Will Sutton. Sutton is definitely one of the best defensive players Arizona State has ever had. But he he would be up there with some other guys. I can't think of any off the top of my head, though. Uh, like like a Marcus Hardison or a, oh, my God, he just went, uh, Rennell Wren. He's up there with some of those kind of guys where you know, a very, very high caliber kind of defensive lineman. And both of those guys made it to the pros. For what it's worth, uh, Lola is coming off of a three year career where he had 11 sacks and uh, 20 tackles for loss, and he did it in 27 games. So, I mean, th- this is a guy who was consistently finding his way into the backfield. Keep in mind, this is a six foot two, 305 pound defensive lineman. So, I mean, he was someone that Arizona State was able to get creative with and have fun with. They kind of split him all over the front. He played inside, he did a little bit of edge rushing too because Arizona State has a base 4-3 defense and they're able to kind of flex him all over the place because of the athleticism, because of the strength and the power and the conversion of speed to power. Lole is a very talented player. So losing a good player with versatility and proven proven statistical output, as well as a, a like, like an established veteran guy who had a good hold of the locker room is going to be very, very difficult. I, this... This is tough. This is really, really tough. I, I'm not sure if you can survive this, like I already said. like This this is definitely one of those blows where it feels like you just can't catch a break. No matter, no matter how many times you try to stand back up, you get knocked right back down with the loss of low lane. Now, what is Louisville getting? Louisville is getting, again an NFL caliber player. Now I don't know enough about Louisville to tell you how their defensive line looks, but they are a, they are a solid team. It's more than a bowl eligible team. Uh, The ACC is seemingly wide open right now. Florida state is not what they were. Clemson definitely took a huge step back this year, going from Trevor Lawrence to DJ Ugulele. And we were not expecting that because Ugulele had shown the potential and the poise to be a very good quarterback, and that just wasn't the case. But you also have uh, Pittsburgh is a solid team, but they're losing Kenny Pickett, and they're losing Jordan Addison, uh, the wide receiver, who did end up committing officially to USC. Also, I would like to amend me calling him Braylon Addison last week on the pod. It's Jordan Addison, the wide receiver. So they're losing that. Uh, Wake Forest is there, but they're you know middle of the pack. They're, they're a solid team, not a great team. Uh, Virginia Tech is okay. Virginia is okay. Uh, Boston College is okay. Like the 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 ACC is not is not like solidified by one team right now. It is it is an open an open field for a team to come in and get it. And and Louisville does have 
some good players. They've got their quarterback whose name is now escaping me. It'll come to me later on as I'm looking it up right now because I'm not about to sit here and look a fool. But they have, they have, oh my goodness, it, it's Cunningham. Yeah, Malik Cunningham. They, they have a good team and Lole might help them take that next step towards being a ACC contender. I think, I think he's that good and he is a nice difference maker for the team. Now, Louisville a year ago was a, let's see, they were a, oh, they were only six and seven. Interesting. I think they're better than that now. I think this is a seven to eight win team. And in the ACC, well, holy cow, Wake Forest was 11 and three last year. Let me walk back the being okay. They're a good football team. Uh, Clemson was 10 and three somehow. I forgot NC State is there. NC State is a good team. They, I still feel like they can find a way to compete in the ACC. I, this is a good team, but what Lola is going to do is he's going to take them from good to contending in my opinion, in my very unprofessional ACC scope opinion. I think that I know that Lole is a major difference maker. I don't know what's on the rest of the team. I don't know enough about them to tell you that they're going to win the ACC outright, that they're going to be a 10-win football team because of Jermaine Lole. But that is a huge difference maker on the defensive side of the ball for them. And he is a kind of guy that I feel can ultimately turn in a a major productive performance for them. Now, is he an ACC Defensive Player of the Year? No, but that's because Clemson's got a couple really, really good guys on the defensive line who are looking like first-round draft picks. I can't remember any of their names, and I'm not going to look them up because there's that that would be a counterproductive – podcast is to continue to look up Louisville stuff, but neither here nor there. Ultimately, this is a good Louisville team that just got better because of the addition of Jermaine Lole. Let's go ahead and hop into our final break. When we return, we're going to go ahead and discuss who could possibly step up for Arizona State in order to the, absorb the loss of Jermaine Lole. This is the Locked on Summitables podcast. This episode of the Locked on Summitables is brought to you by Bet Online. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models of different cars and trucks, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, or even 100% more on the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years with prices reliably low for every customer. They have everything you need from brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find a solution to all your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. And again, thank you guys so much for making the Locked On Sun Levels your first listen every day. Go ahead and make your second listen to Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. Rafael Barlow, Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin give fans an in-depth look at the biggest prospects, the latest player rankings, and of course, big boards. Follow Locked On NBA Big Board every day on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Back to the topic at hand now. Arizona State losing Jermaine Lola. Who could possibly step up? I think it starts with the edge rushers finding a way to get some pressure. Thankfully, you have some guys. You know, you have Trevez Moore if he can find a way to stay healthy. BJ Green showed a lot of potential, I believe. Uh, Michael Mattis is another guy that you're hoping can can really step into a big time role and potentially somebody that you can kind of flex all around. Uh, Dylan Hall is someone you'll be looking at. Anthony Cooper is somebody you'll be looking at. You're going to be hoping for Omar Norman Lott to be somebody that you can kind of flex around the defensive front 
because he is he is a, a little bit of a of like a tweener guy at, at a 6'3", 280 pounds. I think he's someone you can kick inside. I think he is someone who can flex off the edge. Uh, looking at the interior of the line, uh, Robbie Harrison, incoming freshman, he could potentially find himself a really big role with the team. The biggest guy that I'm going to be looking for here is going to be Nesta Jade Silvera, the incoming transfer from Miami. Now, him and Lole are basically the same build, both at six, uh, six foot two. Uh, Nessa Jade Silvera, whopping one pound bigger than Lole at 306 pounds. Uh, Jade Silvera, for what it's worth, had a pretty solid career with the Hurricanes in four years, racking up 105 tackles, 16, 16 tackles for loss, only two sacks in his time there. Definitely not much of a pass rushing presence in terms of production, but. I don't think right now you're going to be looking for somebody who's going to be a double-digit sack guy. I think right now what you should be looking for, at least, is somebody who can help help to fill this gap, uh, gaping hole that you have now because of the loss of Lole. Is you're hoping that you can find a rotation of guys to step in. But Jade Silvera is definitely someone that I'm going to be looking heavily at. Because he is an incoming transfer, uh, he's got four years of playing experience in college football and good experience, I, like good playing time, uh, 30, uh, 35 and 38 tackles in the last two years, uh, eight tackles for loss in 2020 for what it's worth. He did that in se- uh, 11 games, so a productive player and somebody who has some proven numbers. Uh, another guy I'm going to be looking at is uh, Tatala Pesifi. I believe is how you say it. He is an, another defensive lineman for the team, a, a bigger guy at six foot five, weighing in at 305 pounds. Now, this was somebody who stood out big time during spring practice and is potentially a player who can really come into his own this year. And now the opportunity is there for him. So this isn't a guy who saw a lot of playing time for the Sun Devils, uh, 20 tackles last year, uh, zero career sacks. So again, not somebody who's been a stat stuffing guy, hasn't had a lot of like starting opportunities, if any, and now he's going to be thrust into a role where he almost has to be a productive player for the team. There's there's not a lot of room for error for the defensive line in general, and uh, Pesifi is going to be someone that the team is really hoping can step up. Now, he did show off a lot of potential during the spring ball. Like I said, a good friend of the podcast, Donnie Drew, and was highlighting him as somebody who really looked like he was ready to take that next step. And now the Sun Devils are going to be banking on that for, for their, for their futures. They're hoping that Pesifi can, can really blossom into something special for the team. So, you know, fingers crossed on that. We'll have to wait and see whether or not that pans out the way that the team is hoping that it will. But Pesifi and Jade Silvera are definitely the guys who are going to be the most looked at from the defensive interior. Uh, Again, I'm hoping that the defensive ends can find a way to step up. Michael Mattis definitely being one of those guys as a redshirt senior for the team. Uh, Stanley Lambert, a 6'4", 245-pound edge rusher, also a redshirt senior. You're going to be looking at at your older guys now. I really hope that Trevez Moore can find a way to stay healthy because I think that he could be a really big time difference maker at that edge rushing spot for the team. And if he is able to stay healthy and he does live up to that hype, then you have your pass rusher from the defensive line. You have the person who's going to generate the most pressure and get you sacks and, you know, make life a little bit easier on a rebuilt secondary. I think that's the other really big impact here is the secondary might be the biggest loser because there's not going to be a lot of proven guys uh, in front of them in that front seven to generate pressure and, you know, make their lives a little bit easier and make it so that they don't have to cover for five to six seconds because there there's a lot of retooling that's going on. There's a lot of unproven, you know, call it potential or whatever have you. I'll call it potential because I do like what's back there, but It is a very scary situation that Arizona State has found themselves in now. But again, lots of time between now and the start of the season to hopefully figure out 
what you're going to do. But that is going to wrap up this Monday edition of the Locked on Sunnivals podcast. Again, thank you guys so much for making us your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms if you want to follow us wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. But wherever you get your podcasts, make sure you follow or subscribe and hit the notifications button so that you get updates whenever we post a podcast. Right now, that being Monday through Monday through Friday, and with me being healthy and feeling good again, that will be the case. No need to worry about missing any pods. And until next time, guys, you keep it locked on right here. I'm locked on some of those.